Let's play a game where you, the audience, are the jury and where I... I am the defendant in a case against a YouTube comment. After the trial, you can decide if you think I'm right or wrong in this very tough case of... At first I thought, yeah, you're right, it's a tool on its own. But after thinking about it for a while, I decided to build a case against the commenter. So here we go. I should say, I don't have any legal education whatsoever. The closest I would come to that is that I used to teach ethics. I used to stroll around the classroom and have the kids in my class be the jury of ethical dilemmas, where they would argue for what they thought was right. Therefore, I'm not a lawyer. I don't really know what I am today, to be honest. Sometimes I call myself a woodworker, but that can lead to a question of like, can you make us something? So sometimes I just say that I'm a YouTube- Objection, how is this relevant to the case? Sustained, please stick to the topic. We don't really care how you define yourself. Sorry, your honor. This video is sponsored by Bamboo Lab. My claim is that the 3D printer actually is a woodworking tool, and I also want to go further and say it will be an invaluable asset for the future woodworker. But let's start by breaking it down a bit. We have to start by defining the word tool. You've seen me breaking down lumber and milling it so far, for that I used a jigsaw and a planer thicknesser. Most of you would probably agree that they are indeed woodworking tools. But what does the word tool actually mean? Well, some might say that the general definition is that a tool is a device, especially one held in hand, to carry out a particular function. Whilst that definition works, I would say it is a bit old-fashioned. Of course, a jigsaw is a handheld tool that I use to cut wood and therefore it is indeed directly in contact with the wood to cut and shape it. But there's also the more metaphorical or figurative definition, that a tool is something used to achieve a purpose. Without some way of measuring the wood, I would have a hard time woodworking because it helps me achieve my goal, but it doesn't cut, shape or join wood. A folding ruler is a measuring device. According to the first definition of the word tool, though, it's not a tool. But according to the broader one, it is. It helps me get precision in my woodworking and therefore it is an adjacent tool in my woodworking. So is the fence on my router table, although it won't cut, shape or join wood. But this isn't just a case of semantics, there's more to it. I have equipped my workshop with tools over the years. Tools that help me in my woodworking. The more I learned about woodworking, the more tools I acquired. Because I knew I wanted to keep doing this. Some of them only to help me do things faster, and some of them to help me get better accuracy. The Festool Domino, for instance. I use that for accuracy and speed, rather than anything else. I use a CNC for accuracy, but not for speed. I would cut that way quicker on the bandsaw if I wanted, but it wouldn't have the same accuracy. So far we have two different definitions of the word tool, so let's take a look at the 3D printer. A 3D printer is a digital fabrication tool. It creates three-dimensional objects layer by layer following a digital design. It takes 3D models from a computer and turns them into physical objects. It's called an additive manufacturing process. On the other hand, we have a subtractive manufacturing process like woodworking, where instead of building up material, we're cutting it away to create something. Which brings me to another important point in this case. Because I don't know if you know this story, but a couple of years ago, some of the engineers at DJI saw that there was room for improving 3D printing. So they started a company with the goal of making a better 3D printer. Before that, the 3D printers were printing at a speed of about 50 millimeters a second, which meant if you were printing even a small item, it would take a really long time. And when Bamboo Lab released their first printer, it was printing at 500 millimeters a second. But not only the objection, clearly the defendant has a conflict of interest here. Objection overruled. Oh, come on, it's clearly a conflict of interest. Mr. Vance, 
This is not your place to speak. The argument will stand or fall based on the demonstration itself. Let's see the evidence, but please get to the point we don't have all day here and... My wig is killing me. As I was saying, the speed was one thing, but another thing was reliability and quality. For the 3D printer to be a really valuable tool to any woodworker, it needs to have speed, quality and reliability. You can't really print a template for woodworking if the size in the computer won't match what comes out of the 3D printer. But with Bamboo Lab, that all changed because they were reliable and with good quality. And most often, you need the item sooner rather than later. If you need a template, you want it to print as quickly as possible. But let me get into this project to explain Exhibit A. So, the truth is, I've never remade a project of mine. Ever. So when I tried looking back at my old furniture, I decided that I wanted to give the bench I made a new try. This time though, I would make it in walnut and then try to sell it. And I would try not to make the same mistakes I did the last time. That would mean making the bench to a standard I would feel comfortable selling. But I can't fail because this is walnut. It's not Swedish walnut because, yeah, it doesn't look as cool. So this is American walnut and it comes in at a price of $5,400 per cubic meter. Yeah. So I bought 0 0.06 cubic meter for a price of $1,000 with shipping. Now, why am I saying that? Well, I'll get to the point of using the least amount of it as possible in a bit. After ordering the walnut and letting it sit in the workshop to climatize, is that a word? Anyways, when you have wood delivered, ideally you want to let the wood acclimate. Is that the right word? Wood contracts and expands based on the relative humidity, so if you get straight to work on the wood after delivery, that would increase the risk of wood warping, cupping or shrinking. So leaving it to rest for a week at least will give you less battles later on. That's also the reason you want to have air around the wood so that air can circulate around it when it's acclimating. Is that the real world? I don't know. But enough about that boring part. The project consists of a top and legs, so it's not the hardest build ever, but it requires some finesse. Say you're a real woodworker and not some YouTube punk like me. You might have a design that you constantly make and sell. In case you do, you want to speed up the process by the use of jigs and templates. And for this particular project, I wanted to prepare with jigs in case I ever wanted to make this again. So for the legs, I wanted to make templates and they will actually help you use less wood as well. Now, the usual way would be to either use plywood or MDF to make a template, which in many cases works great, but the upside of 3D printing is I can actually divide these into parts. Well, I really have to because they wouldn't fit the bed of the printer. Unless I would have a really giant 3D printer. With the CAD model, I exported my design to the slicer. And as you can see, the part is too big for the bed. Well, that's no problem because I can both split and add connectors within the slicer. And when the print is done, you can puzzle it together and use it and then unpuzzle it and place it in a drawer. Which a plywood option wouldn't fit. I place the print over the wood and trace it. I use a white pen on the walnut because some other YouTuber told me to. Then I can use a jigsaw or a bandsaw to follow that line as closely as possible. And then, with some lovely double-sided tape, I can attach that 3D print to the wood and flush trim it. Now, that is a perfect use case for the 3D printer, I would say. Making templates. Store the templates and remake the furniture whenever you want. With this, the 3D printer provides me with an adjacent tool for my woodworking. It is, in fact, a perfect tool for making templates and jigs. I would argue sometimes a lot better than the other tools because unlike other precision tools like CNC's or lasers, you can't really leave them to work during the night. But this can print during the night and when you wake up in the morning, you can get to work. And because of that, I will provide another exhibit. 
which is this. In order to attach these parts together to form the leg structure, I will use the domino. But not everyone can afford such an expensive tool. Another option is using dowels or a mortise and tenon. Since the 3D model exists already in my CAD modeling program, I can make a jig that will fit my piece of wood perfectly. And that will help me align the dowels. Some would say, well, you could also use dowel pins. Well, if you don't have them, this print took about 20 minutes. If you have a shop that sells dowel pins quicker, go for it. But I've always struggled with dowel pins to align perfectly because the tip of the dowel will hit the wood before you have the chance to perfectly align them. So I actually think this is an evolution of that. Of course, using the same technique, I can make jigs that help me mark out my mortise and tenons with precision. In this particular case though, I am using the Festool Domino because I have it, but that doesn't exclude the use of the 3D printer. I have 3D printed dry fit dominoes. They're just slightly smaller than the original dominoes, so they let me do a dry fit of the project before doing the actual glue up. But I'm not done there. One of the issues with gluing up legs like this is that they need to glue flat. But I also want the legs to have the correct angle. It's not always easy. I usually like to glue both leg sets together to make sure I get the same angles, but in this case, I don't need to. For the glue up, I made a simple jig with plywood that I could use for the glue up. But I also 3D printed the empty space that is supposed to go in between the legs to make sure I would maintain the correct angle. Now, both Exhibit A and B have provided accuracy for my project the same way the fence on my router table or the folding ruler would. Achieving accuracy is very important in my way of woodworking, and because of that, I appreciate any tool that will help me get that accuracy. Using that router fence, I could route the edge of my seat for the bench with a really good accuracy as well, but also with good dust collection. And here's another way the 3D printer can help my woodworking. The actual dust port on the back of my router table leads down to the specific dust collection I installed in my router table. And this was made using the 3D printer. The out port on the router table is magnetic and on that I attach my 3D printed magnetic dust port attachment, which lets me move the dust collection from machine to machine with ease. Which begs the question, is the dust collector a tool? In my book, it is as much of an adjacent tool as the 3D printer. Both of them are important for me to reach my goal of a finished product. Now, throughout this project, you might also have seen me use some 3D printed tools. That's all meta. But a tool that can print tools is great. You don't need to run to the store to buy a square, you can print one. But then again, is a square a tool? I guess this is me remaking my first ever project. Now, this isn't really a remake altogether because I have adapted the design a bit. But all in all, it's basically the same. Now, of course, there are a lot of steps in woodworking where I don't use the 3D printer, like what you see here. Using the router table to create the roundover on the legs and the stretchers sanding and gluing up and finishing. Sometimes it makes me wonder who those commenters are. I see someone sitting with his phone looking at a video and the more he watches the more infuriated he gets until he can't keep it in anymore and decides to leave a comment. See, I guess some people want to maintain order in this world, whilst if it was me, well, first of all, I rarely find a YouTube video I'm watching getting me all riled up. But if it did, I would probably change video, watch something else. So I'm finding myself having a hard time putting myself in their shoes, I guess. I'm not making this video to piss the commenter off even more. I guess I just fell in the trap this time and want to further deepen the argument. Sometimes we see things for what they are, but sometimes we can see beyond what they are. Along that same fashion, I guess you could see the 3D printer as a kitchen tool as well. I'm not a chef, so I'm not sure what you would print, but I'm pretty sure there are prints for the kitchen out there, or for the car mechanic. 
If someone would ask me what tools I use the most for my woodworking, I could make a list. But on that list, I would definitely put the 3D printer. Because that's what I use. It might not be what every woodworker use, but it's what I use. I will have plans available if you want to have a go making this for yourself. And of course the plans will include the 3D prints I have used in this video. Objection! Come on, he's just trying to make money on this now. It's irrelevant. Sustained. Let's go for the closing arguments now. I can't take any more of this. Look, okay. <clears throat> Esteemed jury, watchers of this video, trolls and toddlers, it is now time for you to decide. Only for this specific build, you've seen me use the 3D printer to achieve precision with various prints. So do you think a tool is defined by its direct interaction with a material or by its purpose? A measuring tape doesn't cut wood, but it's a woodworking tool because it's essential to achieve precision. And in a similar fashion, a 3D printer doesn't cut wood, but it's one of many ways to achieve precision. A tool's value isn't just in the material interaction, it's in how it contributes to the process. So I ask you, is the 3D printer guilty of just being a gimmick? Or has it earned its rightful place in the woodworking shop? It is now time for you to decide.